Nowadays, when people talk about DTM, they would think it's another GT3 series, but that's not the case. DTM is a popular motorsport in German. It's a touring car series that started way back in 1984. Although its real origin can be traced way back to 1972, under a different name, the era between 1984 all the way to 1996 is what people proclaim as the golden age. During this era, privateer teams can enter the championship which follows the Group A rules. Group A rules consisting of vehicles such as touring car and rally cars. They were limited in terms of power, weight, allowed technology, and overall cars. Group A was aimed at privately owned vehicles, but the regulation was constantly being changed to allow more modification of those cars, and the series becomes less straightforward. Then comes 1993, the regulation continued to switch, and at that point, they call it Class 1 Touring Cars. Audi and BMW were the undisputed king of touring car during that time, but after the regulation change, they never took part in the series. Instead, Alfa Romeo, Mercedes, Opel were the three manufacturers that took part, which leads us to today's game. Sega Touring Car Championship is developed by Sega EM3 and published by Sega on September 1996 for the arcade. This game was inspired by Tetsuya Mizuguchi. Yeah, 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 you know. The guy who also made Luminous? Yeah, that's him. Anyway, on a lovely afternoon in 1996, Mizuguchi was watching a video about DTM. After watching the video, Mizuguchi stated that he was reminded of F1 when he took a look at the interior of the DTM cars and said it was incredible. He was stunned by the intense competition of the series with cars crashing into each other and at that moment, it was clear that he wanted to do something about it. And the result is gonna be good, right? We'll find out shortly. For this video, I will be playing the certain version. Anyway, upon booting up the game, you are presented with a head-banging soundtrack. Anyway, you then can select your cars, liveries, and transmission. Wait, why is he here? Why is that thing here? Why? When did he join DTM? Is anything even real at this point? Is this a dream or what? Like I said, you got the three cars that competed in the real life event. Because I don't like Supra and this is DTM, I will not select you. Anyway, select your ride and it's time to race. Uh, I already regretted this. Let's back up a bit. You have four machines to choose from, but they are separated by two drive trains. The Mercedes and Supra are rear wheel drive. Fast, but nightmare to control. Alfa Romeo and Opel Calibra are four wheel drive. Have better cornering, but slower compared to the previous two. 
Personally, I prefer the Oppo Calibra, where I feel the most comfortable with. Gotta respect the Oppo, he finished last place in most races. And here, it's time for him to shine. After that, you are being ordered to qualify just like in real life to decide which position you will start with. Here we go! That's a guilt lap for sure. I'm pretty sure I'll get pulled. Wait, what? After qualifying, you then start the 3 round of Grand Prix. Anyway, the light goes out and away we go! <sighs> I'm not even gonna hide the fact that the controls are abysmal. Despite implementing real life physics, the game itself is also arcadey. Not like F-355 Challenge that went full on realism. And also, coming right off from Sega Rally Championship, the developer decided to use that as a benchmark while work on STCC. And the result is this. Forget everything you learned from Daytona USA or Sega Rally because it's a whole new world and you have to start from the bottom. Cars just don't feel that good to maneuver, especially turning. I want to say the controls are awful, but I want to give some chances, so let me try to explain. Like I said, the game is inspired by Sega Rally, and one might wonder if you can just let go the gas, drift around, and drive. Please don't do that. In STCC, you do that and you will risk yourself spinning out. If you think this is a rally game, we'll pack up your things and leave. This game is more than just that. Cars have weight to it. The amount of momentum exerted from turning the wheel will decide how the car will react. Turn less and hit the wall. Turn more and the car could oversteer. That's where the real problem comes in. You gotta control the car 24-7 to have any sort of chances of moving forward, and it's not easy. In other words, you have to constantly put your fingers onto the button and never leave them because fast and responsive reaction are the key to even survive the world of touring cars. You need to have a clear strategy to tame the beast. When you turn, the car will then snap to that direction, but if you look away, the car will lose control and turn towards the other direction, effectively spinning out and crash if you're not careful. The car is simply twitchy enough to make you lose your mind, and I don't blame you. The cars are designed in a way where you may think it's Sega Rally, but it's not Sega Rally. Cars just, just can be all over the place, and to be honest, that's what I experienced for the first time. I was just crashing and failing all over the place and questioned if I'm just useless. Then I look at the community and wow. Everyone agrees it's frustrating. I guess I'm not that useless after all. So I continued trying for about 30 minutes and then I finished my first race and gradually understand what I need to do. And eventually, I managed to conquer all the three tracks of the game. Not saying I'm good at it, but I was good enough to finish the entire game. The controls may take some time to get used to, but like I said earlier, about the strategy, all your fingers need to be on each button because you will need all of them. Literally. As you can see here, thanks to my trustworthy fingers, I was on my way to the podium. Memorization of each track aren't enough because you need to understand the control. And when the final piece of puzzle is in place, well, I don't regret my decision. Thank you, Sega. Your games always keep me coming back for more. Oh, by the way, there's also an option to tune your car. As good as it sounds, it did not do anything to change my experience. Doesn't matter how much change I made, the car either understeer and oversteer everywhere. Believe me when I say I mess around with every possible tuning for around 1 to 2 hours and nothing best came up. Nothing. If anything, 
it controls even worse. Eventually, I just stick with the standard controls provided by the game, and you know what? It's better that way. And that is basically how I beat the game. I also heard that you need a 3D pad or a steering wheel to make the game quote unquote playable. Well, I'm not sure if that statement is correct as I play with the normal starting D-pad controls on an alternate console system. Yeah, some people say you will fail, but here I am, winning. Don't take people's words for granted. Anyway, I think I'm rambling too much on the controls, so let's move on. There's one thing I gotta give credit about the car department though, is that when you drive them, except for Supra, you feel like driving a touring car. You can feel the sense of speed breezing through you as you accelerate around the track at full velocity. Although it can be hindered by poor controls, but the speed made it up for the weaknesses. The whole game is just really fast paced and each playthrough only lasts around 5 minutes, making the replayability really high. Of course, the memorization comes into play for entire game. Speaking of memorization, you have 3 tracks to race on. Well, 4 if you're tough enough, or 5, but let's talk about that later. You start off at Country Circuit, a simple race track with not much tricky corners. The first turn usually gave me small hiccups, but eventually, I was able to get through it. Then you have the two corners which are fun to drift across, and then the final turn. Seems pretty decent, and not much problem at all. Groundwalk Circuit, a track taking place in the area of a mountain just like Fuji Speedway. It got tricky corners, much trickier than your exam. After wrestling with the hot controls, I was able to drift around each turn, not hitting any wall and stay with it the leader. I'm serious, I'm not making too much mistakes and as we approach the start finish line, even the dog agrees, my top speed pulls away from him and I was in the lead again. Not even the first turn can stop me now. On to the final default track, and the dog is more excited than what he used to listen previously. We have Brickwall Town, his favorite track, the supposedly hardest track in the game. Despite making contact with every possible part of each wall, despite crashing everywhere, surprisingly, I'm still in the lead. I'm not joking. Even the dog agrees. Although the walls are tighter than my jeans, you guessed it, I'm still leading. Even the AI is so slow at the corner and you can pretty much crash anywhere and still win. As long as you're holding the acceleration, as long as you're turning, you win. If you finish overall first across the 3 races, congrats as you will be presented with the most gruesome challenge, Urban Circuit. It's basically breakwater Town, but much worse. Not only the roads are never well, but the damn AI drivers just drove through it like it was nothing. They rarely slow down at all as opposed to you, so if you get stuck, say goodbye to your win as the AI drives away without too much problem. Finish the top 3 and you will get the credits, rewarding you for the, all the hard work and suffering you gone through. After that, you unlock the next mode, Exhibition. The fifth track that you unlock, Boomtown Circuit, a track exclusive to the home conversion, in terms of arcade difficulty, is between country and grand wall. Finish the race in first and you unlock a new car. Definitely not McLaren F1. And oh, Scott Race comes out in December of that year.
definitely not a coincidence. You also unlock another mode, versus mode, where you compete against your AI rivals. You have to perform well so that they can actually follow your footsteps and eventually beating your lab side. At least the AI here knows what it's doing, not crashing into the wall right away. This is important because you have to let the AI take part in the race itself. Effectively watching the AI drives according to your skills and win the race. But I don't blame him for not winning because this game is brutal and he pretty much gave up. And also, I don't want to lose my job over some AI. I swear the dog seems to support the AI. If he managed to somehow win, then you will be rewarded with another two cars, the Sega Rally very own mascots. The two cars from the game, and the control just as bad. Oh yeah, by changing the clock of your console, you can play some bizarre modes. Christmas, Valentine, and April Fool. As if they acknowledge that the game is a joke and decide to go along with it. There's also arcade mode, but all you unlock is longer and harder races. And after what I've gone through... Oh no! God! No! God! Please, no! 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 And that's my review on Sega Touring Car Championship. And no, it's not a bad game. Yes, the controls can be very painful to understand as opposed to other Sega arcade racers, but when you take a deeper dive, it's a decent game. STCC as a whole is a pretty fun game. The presentation is unique, soundtracks are addictive, and what's not to like about DTM? I gotta give credit to Sega, AM3, and Tetsuya Mizuguchi for trying to experiment with something. Combining realistic and arcade physics into the game, eh, it, it was okay. If you found a copy of the game in the wild, go buy it. Spend some time, and you will love it because I'm sure as hell liking it more and more. But don't let the AI win the race. You could lose your job.